Um, good afternoon. Thank you, uh, audience, for um, being here. Welcome. Uh, and thank, thank you for taking the time uh, of, uh, of being present and uh, listening to our, uh, our talks. My name is Robert Jumberg. I'm the managing director of Soliforce. Today, I will not give a technical presentation. Although, of course, I would love to tell you about our innovative product, about what our product can do. Uh, I even brought you a sample of it. Uh, it's, it is completely non-metallic. And one of the nice things of being non-metallic is, uh, for one, it's that is, it's completely has no and hydrogen and brittle. It is extremely easy and fast to install, uh, reducing installation cost. And also, um, sorry, reducing installation cost and also uh, making sure that pro project times can be reduced. And of course, it also has much less CO2 emission during the production stage. But again, but again today it's not about the technical presentation and the reason is that it has already been given two days ago. Of course, I would like to answer any of your questions related to our product later. Um, but for today, the organization asked me to give me to give a brief bird eye introduction of all the developments that are taking place in my home country, the Netherlands. And I would like to give you a brief introduction on four elements that are taking place uh, related to uh, hydrogen backbones, uh, related to industry clusters development, uh, related to mobility and also to the uh, potential of hydrogen production with offshore wind farms. Walking around this conference, I noticed that here in Korea, there's a lot of uh, huge development related to mobility. In my home country, the Netherlands, the initial focus at the moment is not more on mobility, but more on industry clusters. So in that respect, I think it's a very good opportunity for both countries to learn from each other. And I really ask you, uh, proactively ask you, to make sure that we, uh, as countries, we can collaborate with each other and that we really can learn from uh, what we're doing. The first thing I like to uh, talk about is the hydrogen backbones. Um, the challenges uh, of a hydrogen backbone, of course, it's, it's, it's something that's long term. Uh, it requires high political involvement and long lead times. And also the question that we have at the table still uh, is how these international and national backbones will connect to regional backbones that are already being in development. And so these are questions that as, as, a, as a hydrogen uh, society, we still need to answer for the future. Some of, some of the things that are already happening at the moment are the following. Uh, we have... Um, in the northern part of, uh, of our country, we've got a port, it's called Groningen Seaports. Um, and Groningen Seaports is part of the, um, uh, uh, the first European hydrogen valley. And there, there's already a very good initiative of installing a hydrogen backbone in um, the harbor itself, which connects which connects all the different uh, uh, potential chemical off-takers in, um, in the harbor. If we go one step further, then we look on national level, where our TCO, Gasuni, has received the, uh, uh, the go-ahead from our government to repurpose uh, a whole network throughout the Netherlands. Uh, the plan is called Highway 27, and by 2030, 1,400 kilometers of repurposed national grid pipeline uh, needs to be in place. In addition to that, taking the next step, uh, in our port in Rotterdam, port of Rotterdam, where in the future it is foreseen that a lot of hydrogen will be imported from abroad, um, there are already plans and people are making uh, uh, next steps in order to not only use um, uh, and create a, a backbone from Rotterdam to the local industry, but also to create a connection with our 
uh, surrounding countries like Belgium and Germany. And on European level, we even take a step further. We have got the hydrogen, uh, European hydrogen backbone, where there's a collaboration between 28 countries in order to make sure that by 2030, there is a potential of transporting 20 million tons of hydrogen per year through Europe. The next trend, like I mentioned earlier, is local regional clusters. Um, in developing these local regi regional clusters, the question and the challenge that we still foresee in the, in the future is to understand how these local distribution net networks will be managed and how they will be maintained. Like earlier I told you that there is a hydrogen backbone plan in Europe, but there's no plan or strategy yet on how all the regional clusters can be accelerated and how they need to be connected ultimately through these existing backbones. Another thing that is uh, on the table is that there is a, a lot of local, regional or national regulations. And all these regulations need to be connected to each other in order to really make, to make sure that the acceleration of this whole industry will be taking place. Some of the examples that are currently already taking place in Netherlands. Sorry that I paused because I thought it was a short announcement, but it took a bit longer than I was expecting. Uh, going back to the regional industries, uh, uh, besides the, um, the initiative that has already been taken in Groningen Seaports, you see that most of, uh, of our ports taking also additional um, measures in order to make sure that they can uh, expand regional clusters. As for instance, in the port in Amsterdam, we've got a project ongoing, it's called H2 Array where a 500 megawatt uh, green hydrogen plant is being planned. In the southern port in, uh, in the Netherlands, it's port of Zeeland, uh, the North Sea port, there the company Volt H2 is planning to, uh, to start a, a 25 megawatt uh, a startup uh, project there. And in Rotterdam, uh, the por uh, a port there, Shell, is planning to install also a 200 megawatt electrolyzer plant. And this, all these clusters, all these plants are meant to provide hydrogen through the local industrial um, um, and, and, and chemistry companies in, uh, in the region. The third point is mobility question. And I think in that respect, we can learn a lot from Korea. Uh, I understood walking around here for a few days that there, in Korea there are almost already 200 hydrogen filling stations and more than 40,000 hydrogen cars on the road. In comparison, we in the Netherlands have got 17 hydrogen stations and nearly 1,000 hydrogen cars on the road. So I think in acceleration of this mobility question, we can learn a lot from Korea. The questions in our, country, in our country that we have at the table, uh, and the challenge that we see is how to distribute hydrogen to this fueling station if you want to upscale it. Uh, I see here a lot of uh, uh, potential with uh, trailer tubes, um, but there might be other options to, uh, 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 to look at. 
And the options that you can look at is how to produce this hydrogen on a small scale um, locally. And some examples of uh, 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 developing that is that we uh, uh, we create Shell created a green planet in the Netherlands where they combined all the uh, the potential fillings. So not only a hydrogen station, but a electricity, hydrogen, biogas, diesel filling station that you can use for different purposes. And while being there you, and, and being commuting, you can also use the place for having a business meeting. Yeah, so they want to make, really wanted to make it more like a energy hub. Another development that is taking place that most of the fueling stations that, uh, uh, that are being developed, um, the option of two trailers is only considered as a short-term solution. Most of the hydrogen stations want to have local hydrogen production, either from solar or from wind, uh, wind power, it can directly be uh, inserted into the uh, fueling station. The, lar the last thing I want to talk about is the, uh, the, the potential of, you of uh, hydrogen production from offshore um, wind. And the challenges in developing that industry is of course, is where are we going to generate the hydrogen? Is that onshore? Is that offshore? Or is that on the windmill itself? And in case you have made a decision where you want to uh, 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 produce, this, produce it, how are you going to then going to distribute this? A few examples in that respect are um, a project that's called Dual. Uh, this is a pilot project where indeed um, we are producing hydrogen directly inside the wind mill. It's an onshore project. It's been used as a pilot project to see how this uh, um, development can be scaled up. Another option is to use offshore windmills and, and to bring all the electricity being produced for the off from the offshore wind together in an island. And basically from that island, you can see if you either want to bring the electricity uh, back to shore, or if you want to uh, repurpose the electricity into hydrogen and bring that to shore, or if you want to use the island as a storage area where uh, potentially ships can come and pick up the hydrogen. The last example in that is a project that's called North H2. It's a, a, a consortium of a, a quite some companies in the Netherlands, where basically they are looking at all the various options that I just mentioned. Uh, we're, we're looking at the option of producing hydrogen in offshore, uh, on offshore um, oil and gas platforms. It's a project that's called Poseidon, which in my, uh, I believe is the first project in the world where hydrogen is being produced on an off, of, of, a future, uh, of a former offshore oil and gas platform. Another option is in the North H2 program is to check indeed how we can uh, uh, make use of the offshore wind farms and, and try to make a combination in between you, uh, either producing uh, the hydrogen directly on the offshore wind or uh, making a substation where the electricity uh, uh, comes together and from where um, the production from hydrogen starts from there. Um, again, these are all um, developments that are taking place. There's a lot of things to be done. A lot of things already have been done. Um, and again, I, I hope this gives a brief overview uh, of where, where my home, home country, the Netherlands, uh, is currently uh, working on. I'd like to leave it um, for this moment with this. Um, if there's any questions about what I just show you on all the developments, you can either ask me or you can uh, approach our embassy or you can approach our Dutch delegation. I'm not only here uh, this week alone. We are here with a complete Dutch delegation representing the complete supply chain uh, uh, that, is, that is there in the Netherlands. 
Uh, we've got a pavilion in, um, in the hall next to it. It's orange, so you cannot miss it. Um, and it, if you do have any questions on, uh, uh, on our product, uh, then let me know. Last thing I like to uh, uh, mention, now I'm standing here, I like to um, thank the H2 Meet um, organization and especially also the Innovation Award um, Committee uh, because we have been nominated for the Innovation Award as, as a non-Korean uh, uh, company. Uh, and that really gives us a boost in the confidence that our product, our product, uh, will, can also play a significant role in um, the hydrogen development here in Korea. So again, I'd like to thank the organization uh, for, uh, for doing this. And uh, we are very pleased that uh, an honor to be here. Thank you very much.